Hi there, everyone. I uh, wanted to make a quick video here going through um, a couple uh, big ticket items in the real estate investment package, the contract and legal template package that we were speaking about the last time we met on Thursday about a week ago. A couple of you after that session had asked what's all included in the package and what do some of those documents look like. So I did want to make a quick video here and, and highlight some of the big ticket items that I think you'll find um, incredibly valuable. Um, one of them, I will start here, is the assignment, assumption, and optional novation. So as with any other document that, would, that is included in this package, is these are a blank slate. So you'll be adding in dates, uh, names of parties, addresses, states. Um, so these are all blank. These are clean and ready to be used and modified by you according to you know the state that you operate in and uh you know parties that you're typically dealing with the recital section again i'm not gonna i'm gonna not go into too much detail here but recitals that just means like predetermined admissions or agreements between the parties that could be called into dispute by this the sections that follow um <clears throat> won't go into detail there but uh, in another video, I will. Here's your assignment and assumption language, and then your no, your novation language here. At the point where novation kicks in, that's your full release from that contract. Um, the other area that I wanted to cover here and highlight, um, which I know quite a few of you are asking about, is the refund of deposits and other monies. Um, so to protect yourself as the wholesaler. So this is language that we had um, inserted with one of our other uh, wholesale clients that we have worked with um, where this is not necessarily where the deposit would be submitted directly to your LLC operating account. This is still gonna go to the escrow agent, but in this section here, this is kind of your, this is your ticket, your key to those funds. So you here is where you wanna be as specific as you possibly can um to that escrow agent or title company and explain to them that at the the occurrence of these events a b c and d if that if any of those occur the funds that are being held in escrow relative to um you know this section as part of the assignment fee will immediately be triggered and released to uh the wholesaler so this is something that you'll want to pay very close attention to is this section and you'll want to be as specific as you can enter your amount, your party, describe uh, when, this is very important, when should the monies be distributed. So this is uh, essentially here, these all bold uh, words or y'all, where it's all bolded there at the end. This is where you want to define what, what happens when the end cash buyer defaults. What is a default? When, what does a default look like? And when those happen, how are those monies to be distributed? Uh, as long as you be as crystal clear as possible, you should be pretty well protected. Okay, next we will go through a, a confidentiality agreement. This is a pretty good one as well. Um, this is, I, I like these documents. This is uh, important in my opinion, especially if you have uh, potential exposure to confidential or proprietary information. This is something I like to use, especially in joint venture agreements, joint uh, with other LLCs or other people, individuals that are going to have access to perhaps some of your confidential information or proprietary information that you've developed yourself, a system, a process, a database. Uh, you wanna protect that information if you're going to be in a joint venture and giving access to say a drive um, with that partner. This is probably gonna be a good document to have with you that lays out what that confidential information is, what is excluded, what are the obligations of the person that's agreeing to not disclose. Again, very comprehensive. Won't go into too much detail there. Next, let's hit the joint venture agreement, another big ticket item. Uh, th another reason I like this, so in the first one I showed you, we had a recital section. 
I like this one because we have uh, definitions as well, lays out, you know, how we're using these words within this document. And uh, just make sure that you read through those. Uh, some people use terminology differently and in different circumstances. So just make sure that this fits with how you conduct business and operate, um, you know, your, your wholesale transactions. But again, uh, lays out, is the, again, these are very uh, comprehensive and thorough, um, more thorough than the ones I've seen. Uh, but the purpose of that is to eliminate misinterpretations. Now, don't get overwhelmed by the length of these. Everything is pretty much filled, filled in. You just need to insert all of the variables here. But just keep in mind that it is thorough for the purpose of removing misinterpretation and saving you from having to go to court. This is designed to protect that possibility or reduce that possibility as low as humanly possible. All right, next. All right. I like this document as well. Checklist business uh, deductions. So <clears throat> this is, I think this is a tremendous document as well. This goes through all of the things that can be deducted um, and written off on your taxes as far as like business expenses go. Uh, these are the items that if you have a bookkeeper, make sure that you let them know um, that if they see one of these entries that is applicable, that that would be considered a business expense. Um, obviously, if you're doing your own, keep these in mind and so that you can identify them as a business expense. I think that's a very valuable document. Um, let's see. Promissory note and security agreement. Um, that would be a situation where you may be giving a promissory note to a seller. Um, if you're going to be in a seller finance situation, but let me go through the seller finance addendum, show you what that looks like. Again, this uh, is designed to allow you flexibility to uh, set this up in a way that works for you, but also works for the seller. Now, <clears throat> there is a section for recitals, predetermined agreements, and admissions between the parties. Um, and our promissory note and mortgage slash security agreement here is laid out where, again, you'll just need to be specific and uh, identify the name, names of the parties, the state, the location, collateral, the uh, financing terms, whether there's going to be a balloon attached, uh, what's the term, the amortization schedule, uh, term, of the years of payoff, how the payments are going to be made, and then any like prepayment um, penalties or anything like that. So again, this allows for flexibility, is designed to um, allow you the most say in the in um, in your negotiations. I think those are the big ticket items. Uh, there, I think there was a non a mutual non-disclosure agreement. Uh, this is another good one to have, especially if you guys are doing um, joint venture agreements. Also a good document to have, very thorough. Um, protects you, but also protects uh, is designed to protect your partner as well. So that it actually is a joint venture, joint venture agreement. So there's not any sabotage going on. So yeah, I, I will go, I'll go through these uh, at another time. I'm not going to go through every, every single one today, but you get the idea um, of what these look like, the value that's in them, how they can be utilized. So I hope this is useful. If you have any questions, uh, by all means, reach out to me or Ellie, and we'll be happy to answer those questions for you.